Well, I've never gotten so many questions in my life about one specific item on YouTube, and that's this baby right here. My DIY live well. Now, this is not a uh, bait well. Like, I don't put minnows in here. No, this thing is massive. I don't know if you can tell by the uh, video or not, but it's pretty big. So mainly I use this live well for like panfish, uh, crappie mainly. So you're going to be seeing me taking this out here uh, soon on some crappie fishing adventures. But uh, I get so many questions on this live well and you know how I have it set up, stuff like that. So I'm going to walk you through that today and hopefully shed some light on those questions. Alright, first things first. When you're on a kayak and uh, you bump a stump or anything, it gets a little rocky, a little tippy. So uh, what I have here is I have a lid with a uh, just a piece of paracord attached, two washers to keep that knot from working its way through that hole. And, uh, on the back side, I have another hole with another stainless steel washer. Stainless steel parts and screws. Use that on all your water stuff, of course. And then I have a knot here, and that kind of keeps the lid A, most of the time, I'll keep the lid off to the side and let it dangle. Uh, especially if I'm catching crappie left and right, I'll just drop them in the bucket. But once that bucket starts getting full, they get a little floppy. I can take this, uh, you know, partially screw it down. And that way, that keeps them in there without jumping out. I've never had one jump out whatsoever, but you never know. I've jumped way ahead, I'm sorry. But this bucket right here, oh, side note, shout out to H24 Outdoors. Thank you, fellas and ladies, for all the awesome gear that I get from y'all, including uh, Yak Attack accessories and awesome, awesome baits that you can't find at Walmart or other places, big chain places. So anyways, H24 Outdoors is a place I use locally for all my fishing gear. Before I get to all the components of this, I already talked about the lid. This right here is a reusable kitty litter bucket, barrel. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know if you recognize this. I don't own a cat. Uh, I'll never have a cat. No offense to y'all who have cats, but I'm just not a cat fan. I do have a dog though. This is a kitty litter barrel bucket, whatever. And it's reusable. You just put the kitty litter in here and you seal it off and scoop it out. I guess that's what people do. I don't know. But anyways, you can find these at like your local pet stores, like uh, Pet Country, uh, pet smart, you know those big chain pet stores. They actually have these they range from 40 to 50 to 60 bucks. So it just depends on the size you get this is the medium one So it's kind of in between but if you watch out you can get a good sale on okay Or you can go online probably find something better on Amazon whatever. Okay, so that's what this item is right here This is a kitty litter Reusable barrel so you don't have to I guess buy the bags each time whatever like that. When I bought this, I actually didn't have kitty litter in here. This is just a reusable Tupperware thing, basically. So, uh, I don't know the exact dimensions of it, but this will for sure fit in a milk crate area. It's not bigger than a milk crate. It's about that same size. So, it's nearly the same dimensions of a milk crate. So, if that's your first worry, then uh, if, you're, if your kayak can hold a milk crate, then you can hold this specific kitty litter barrel okay so that's what it is is a kitty litter barrel now on the top the back section of here let's turn around to the business end um, I have a handle now the reason this is cracked right here is because I dropped it one day I was uh, you know carrying it like this and putting it on my kayak and I dropped it and it fell right there so I was like oh I need to fix that problem real quick and I got a kayak handle this is just your standard kayak uh, rope handle and it's uh, put together with some stainless steel hardware and that makes it way easier to carry especially when you got 13 fish in there or whatever uh, that makes it a little easier to tote with that little bit of water in there keeping those fish alive okay uh, let's go down from here we got the uh, battery box uh, this one uh, this battery box is probably about 15 bucks. You can get them cheaper. You can get one for uh, you know nine dollars, a little orange one at a Walmart. You know you can get them pretty cheap these days. This is how it was three and a half years ago. Um, that's what I used then. Okay, so this is about 15 bucks here, and this is just one of those waterproof um, boxes, and it's got to be big enough to hold a 12 volt battery. 
Okay, that's key. Um, right here on the bilge pump, if you see on there, without the glare, it says you need a 12 volt battery, okay? Plus a 2.5 amp fuse, okay? So your battery needs to be able to fit inside of here, and of course, I went with the bigger one for that reason too. Okay, let's open this up. Let's check out the wiring, okay? Um, I just left these in here. Uh, these are just like little foam pads to kind of deafen the sound a little bit. From all the kayak and the waves and the wind, having these padding in here kind of helps deafen that sound. That way the crappie won't be spooked when you're over the top of them. Uh, right here is my inline fuse on the positive side. It's just your uh, standard waterproof casing. It's got a 2.5 amp fuse right there. Um, and I'm not going to walk you through all the wiring process. It's pretty simple, just like a fish find or anything else. And here's my negative side. But right here, I have an on-off switch. I don't want the bilge pump running constantly, making noise. So right here on the side, you can see that, there's an on and off switch. Just a simple switch you get from the hardware shop. And it's just on or off. There's no in-between. Just on or off, okay? So that's the uh, battery side of things. Now, obviously you have to run the cables from the bilge pump to the batteries, your positive and negative side of those cables. So right here I have a through hole um, connector piece that actually works with this hose. It's just a through hole um, hose connector. That's all it is. And I, and I got some silicone around that just to keep that dry and splash and stuff like that. So uh, I use this little clear hose to run my um, negative and positive wire all the way to the end of my bilge pump, just making it more waterproof. And um, this is just some uh, standard tape I wrapped around there just to keep that a little bit tighter and wear and tear mainly. I wanna keep those wires you know, strong and lasting longer because I throw it constantly in the side of the water and it's banging the side of my kayak and stuff like that. And that way it protects those wires, make them a little last longer. All right, so that's just a through hole 90 degree connector piece for your typical hose connector. That's all that is right there. Then I have a hose clamp on that. All right, I have this just a standard bilge pump. You can get these from $10 to $15. I believe this one was $15 in the day. So I have a uh, just a clear hose on here. You can use any color hose, a black hose, it don't matter. But uh, this is just what I had laying around, so I ended up using that. Right here I have a hose clamp connected. And this goes all the way to, this is the direct water pumping into my live well. I have it going right here on the back top of this live well. And that's where it pumps into. Again, here is another 90 degree through hole hose connector, okay? Let's go on the inside a little bit. So if you see right back there, you have a uh, through hole, that's that same connector piece, through hole, it's actually an aerator piece. And uh, that's where the water comes out and sprays like it fans out perfectly. So that's a 90 degree, I'll put the link in the description and here's a picture of it right here, just a through hole aerator sprayer. And that's a, a hose connector piece right there, okay? And of course I got silicone around there and stuff like that. Now that is the business end, that's the bilge pump end. And then uh, on the opposite side, I don't want this to get too full because I'm not constantly going back there and looking where the water level is. I don't want to worry about that whatsoever. So uh, this uh, depends on you and how much weight you can have in your kayak, but I have a drain, okay? Once the water level gets to a certain height, it's going to automatically come out the side of this part right here and go straight into the water. Now when I position this in my boat, I want to make sure this hose is outside my boat and off to the side, okay? I don't want it going into my kayak itself, especially my sit-in, because I'm going to swamp myself. But this hose, I always position where it's shooting straight out the side of my boat and not splashing inward or anything like that. And basically, it just keeps me from overfilling this. The reason I do that is, uh, you know, the fish need oxygen to keep them alive. You know, at the end of the day, I'm like, well, maybe I don't want to mess with 20 fish or whatever, I might let some of them go. Or there might have been some of those that were 10 and a half and I caught some 13s. So I'm like, well, I don't want to 
skin up and fry those 10 and a half so when I got these 13. So I might release some fish. And in doing so, what I'll do is kind of aerate the water. I will turn on my switch, run some fresh water, uh, more oxygen through that water they've been sitting in, and that keeps them alive and thriving. Like, makes a huge difference. So when I'm doing that, I want the old water to circulate out, coming out of this side of the hose, and new water going in. That way those fish are getting oxygen, and they can uh, be a lot more alert and more lively in your live well. That makes sense, right? Okay, so anyways, so that's the purpose of this. You don't have to do that, but just for me, and able to see uh, the water level, it's just it's too much work to look back each time and see where my water level is. I just created this little escape drain, basically. You can make this higher or lower depending on how much water you want in your kayak and weighing you down. The pieces for this is just another piece of that clear hose. I have a hose clamp and this is a through hole hose connector. Just another piece of that, okay? Uh, so we'll flip it over. All right, on the inside, that's the drain side. And the reason I got that mesh piece on there, you don't have to have that on there, but if I ever do put some small bait fish in here by chance, mix them in with my big fish, then I don't want them slipping out and escaping. So if you put that little piece of mesh in there, that's going to keep them intact. That way they ain't escaping out the hose and getting out and you're losing your bait fish, okay? So that's what that piece is there for. It's not really to you know, clean out leaves, stuff like that. It's more keeping my bait fish swimming away and I can still have them for crappie fishing. Because a lot of times I'll do some spider rigging and I want some live bait for spider rigging. And I, I might use this, I might not. It just depends on how much I buy. And I don't want them getting out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That defeats the purpose of having bait. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, the main thing is you want to get some silicone. You want to make sure you silicone all those holes and things you're drilling into. Um, that way you don't have no leaks, especially with your wiring and stuff like that. Okay? Uh, now, something I've been wanting to do is add some rod holders to it. Uh, now my kayak right now is set up where I can still have my two crappie poles in the you know boat with me, so I don't need any extras. But if you're in a smaller kayak where you don't have many options to stow some uh, extra rods, stuff like that, you could. You got plenty of space on this. Is you can attach some of those uh, you know PVC, those plastic rod holders on the side. You can get two on this side or even more. You can do two on the other side. You can have up to four poles on this. Uh, just be careful. You want to make sure that when you drop it in your, um, you know, your tank well, that uh, those rod holders are high enough where it's actually going to fit down in there. Okay. So, anyways, that is my live well. Sorry, I haven't gotten this video out sooner. I know a lot of y'all has been asking, like, oh, show us the live well, bro. Uh, the live well. This is your biggest expense right here. This bucket, and they range from forty to sixty bucks, depends on the size you're wanting. Um, and then, you know, the battery itself, I had a 12 volt battery already from a fish finder, an extra one. And those are ranged from 15 bucks, 20 bucks, depending on where you get it. And then your battery box, you know, waterproof box, another 10, 15 bucks, stuff like that. So you're looking at a DIY live well all together. This was, I want to say I dropped probably 80 bucks or less on this. That's it. 80 bucks or less. Now, if you go to Wilderness Live Well, it's like, you know, $200, I think $199. And the Hobie Live Well is like $300 plus. I mean, you can save a lot of money by making your own. You don't even have to use this. If you want, you can go to Home Depot and get you a five gallon bucket. I mean, but this is what I prefer to use just because I like how the, it's angled towards me. See that angle there? So I have this facing to my seat and I can easily reach back and drop some cropping in there. So the angle of that hole is amazing. Versus just a hole that's straight up and you have to reach over and drop those fish in there and maybe a chance to lose them. Yeah. So that's why I went with this bucket in the first place. Well, if you have any additional questions about my live well, um, this might be one actually, I just thought of something. How many fish can you get in here? Well, mainly I use this for crappie fishing. I don't put bass in here, I don't keep bass. But um, I mainly use this for crappie fishing and for pan fish in general. I've had up to 15 crappie in here with some, I still had some space to put some more in there. That's just all I caught that day was 15 crappie. So that's what I had in there. So I haven't, the limit down here in Arkansas on our lakes, most of them are 30. 
Uh, they may be pushing a little bit, but I think I can get at least 20 in here. And if I'm circulating that water through there, it's going to keep all 20 alive and comfortable. So I haven't pushed it past 15, so um, the jury's still out, but 15 crappies, especially 13 inches or 12 inches, phew, that's a lot of good meat right there, and I don't mind. Okay? So uh, anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button for me. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want me to cover. And uh, I hope to see you on an adventure coming soon.